I was talking to a beekeeping friend of mine this morning and they asked me a question. And uh, you're gonna have to excuse the lighting, I'm outside and this is kind of a spur of the moment video. But the question was, is the honey flow over and are we in a dearth? And if you ask probably 90% of all the beekeepers in Kentucky right now, they would all say yes. And they would all say yes because that's what they've been told and they just regurgitate what everybody else says and uh, they just go with it. And if you ask the FDA, the FDA would also say yes based on the plants that bloom in Kentucky this time of year. They would say the, the honey flow is over and that you're probably going to be in a dearth. And the reason why that happens is because all of that is based on commercial volumes of nectar resources. So by the time that June rolls around, or the middle of June for northern Kentucky, all the plants that bloom and provide a commercial volume of nectar is pretty much over. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the honey flow is over for your specific location. Because there's been many times that I've pulled supers uh, middle of August that were new supers I put on in July, which is supposed to be during dearth. And the easiest way to tell is by observing your beehives. If you are getting stung more, your bees seem more aggressive, and they're mostly just hanging out at the front of the beehives, you're probably in a lull of nectar and the and uh, and the honey flows over and you're probably in a dearth. But if the bees are still zooming in and out of the hives and they're still bringing in pollen and they're not hanging out and you're not getting stung when you go to do an inspection, they don't seem more aggressive, there's still a honey flow going on for your general area. And let me give you a good example. Let's say that this time of year, staghorn sumac is in bloom. And there's maybe three stag, staghorn sumac trees within a three mile radius of your beehives. The bees are going to know about that, but is that the heaviest volume of nectar available to them? So even though that sumac is in bloom, they might not go to that because it's just not a high enough volume. But let's say that you have 10 acres of staghorn sumac in bloom within three miles of your beehives, I guarantee you that the bees are going to pay attention to that. That's a high volume of nectar this time of year. So that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's really highly dependent on your location. And not only is it dependent on your location, it's dependent on the food resources that are available within that two or three mile circle of your beehives. And uh, you'll know if the bees are in a dearth and there's not a nectar flow because the bees will be very aggressive. You'll know as soon as you take that top cover off. You'll get, you know, a whole swarm of guard bees in your face. So another way to tell, I mean, that's basically what I do is just look at the beehives. Let me, uh, let me flip this around so you can see it. All you have to do is look at the beehives. Just not a lot of activity at the front of the hives. I mean, they're flying in and out. But they're not congregating and bearding. I mean, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's about 90 degrees. Here's another beehive I mean there's some guard bees there but look there's pollen coming in more pollen coming in I'm standing right next I'm two feet from that beehive they don't have a care in the world that I'm there You walk up and get close to a beehive that's in a dearth, during a dearth. You're going to know it.
you're gonna know really quick. Now, is there a nectar flow that is strong enough to have an excess? Maybe or maybe not. I just saw honey coming in on that one bee. Honey coming in on a bee there. Or a uh, pollen. Lots of pollen coming in on this hive. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. I'm kind of thinking that the, uh, as far as like, for my general location, when everybody all over Kentucky, this is uh, July 22nd, everybody's talking about honey flows over, the bees are in a dearth. I don't see that indication on my hives. And I don't see that indication on the hives that I have out front either. Let me zoom back out here. So yeah, what I'm saying is all of my hives are not showing any indications of being in a dearth or a lack of honey flow or a lack of nectar or a lack of pollen or any of the things that would cause me to be concerned. And that's kind of like what I'm getting at. People just, I, I mention this all the time, that people just regurgitate what everybody else says and that makes them sound knowledgeable let's go up here and look at these hives kind of got to watch where I'm going because apparently the deer decided to crap all over the place again last night another example right here look again the bees 90 some degrees outside if if there were bees in that hive they'd all be bearded out front but there's not any bees bearded out front they're flying they're zooming in and out they're still bringing in pollen they're still bringing in nectar now the one thing that you have to watch probably my strongest hive that i have pretty consistently every year is this hive i don't see a single bee out front other than the ones flying in and out but for this temperature if it was a dearth they'd be bearded up because they're not going to waste energy in this heat if there isn't resources to be collected they're just not going to do it So anyways, hopefully that helped. Um, feeding sugar water, if they still got resources coming in, feeding sugar water is kind of a bad thing to do. That's kind of like another thing I wanted to bring up. Because I know a lot of people, just as soon as they hear that it's a dearth, they just automatically start feeding sugar syrup. Because why? Because that's what they've been told to do. If you feed sugar syrup while there's still nectar coming in, you're basically polluting your your uh, what will be nectar converted into honey. You're basically polluting that with sugar syrup. And then when you harvest that and extract it and sell it, you're basically selling nothing more than concentrated sugar water. You're not really selling honey. So hope you found this ho helpful and hopefully you learned something from this. If you watch your beehives, you know what's blooming in your area. You will know when it's a dearth. You will know whether or not you need to feed your bees or not sugar syrup. And you'll stop selling polluted honey that's been polluted with concentrated sugar water. And uh, a lot of it is you just got to know how to read your beehives. You got to be able to read the seasons you got to know when things are changing. And 2023 has been a weird year. Almost everything's bloomed one or two months earlier than normal this year. I kind of assume that the blooms are going to 
be cut short one or two months. It's just a weird year. I harvested my first honey in May. Yeah, it was May. End of May. And uh, then I pulled honey supers again in July, which is usually my big pull. And it was relatively light compared to what I pulled in May. So that was just kind of a 2023 has been weird. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.